Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India back to a new session we are talking about the credit market imperfections and we uh, so we have so far covered the the issues like how when we have the borrowers and lenders the information differences that the borrower is sharing with the lender if you have that kind of scenario then what are the the issues that normally face we also introduced the credit market asymmetry where we said that if the borrowers are going to default then the banks uh, are going to face the risk so in order to avoid that that risk they charge the higher rate of interest for borrowing so the difference that we normally see between the borrowing and lending rates it is mainly because the borrower is having or borrower may have shared the limited information with the bank and in ca in case of default the the risk will be completely borne by the uh, bank not by the borrower so in most of the cases in real life scenario the borrowing rates are higher than lending so we analyze that and we also mentioned that when we have uh, uh, in the economy when we see uncertainty a rise in uncertainty or when we see the rise in the number of bad borrowers then we have the high chances of default so when we assume that a is the good borrower one minus a is the bad borrower so a if number of a which is the good borrower if it is increasing then you have almost like a borrowing and lending rate same the moment you have uh, the 1 minus a rising not a a falling then we see a wide difference between the borrowing and lending rate so in that scenario the borrowing rate increases so if you have a situation like this then we normally call it as the credit market imperfections so imperfections imperfections arises because of the uncertainty or the lack of information shared by the borrower or because of the the default risk that the financial institution face in case there is a default so this part we have already covered and it looked quite smooth to understand now here we are introducing two more concepts uh, one is about Uh, how the borrower is going to react if we if he or she is facing what we call it the limited commitment so if you have the limited commitment problem then how it works in real life scenarios so limited commitment in the sense that if the borrower uh, is is going to borrow from the institution if it is not paying then how in that scenario the banks or the financial institutions are going to react Uh, and a limited commitment also deals with the the paying capacity of the borrower so in case the financial institutions have sanctioned the loan to the borrower then if the borrower is not going to pay then what will be the issues how we can safeguard that risk so safeguarding the risk arises with the introduction of collateral which means that financial institutions will be asking from the uh, the borrower that if he or she is having any valuable wealth then how this wealth can act as an collateral so that in case of default of loan bank will be able to compensate the loss by selling the collateral value but collateral plays very nodal role here because on collateral value bank is going to finance the the loan or sanction the loan to the borrower if the collateral value is going to be lower than the amount of borrowing capacity of the borrower will also be lower which in turn means that the borrower's capacity of borrowing depends upon the value of the collateral if the collateral value is rising it means that the borrower's capacity of borrowing is also rising and financial institution will not have any difficulty in giving the or sanctioning the money so in that scenario the collateral values plays very important role and that's why uh, when you go to the bank and if you have any kind of long term saving account and you are seeking uh, a loan for the short term for example one or two years but you are already having a long term saving account with the bank 
then bank does not hesitate to uh, give you or sanction the loan because banks knows that since your long term saving account is with the bank then whatever m amount of money that is flowing to that account it will have the higher value in future because rate of interest will accumulate so once you have the rate of interest accumulating then this will have the positive impact on even if you are going to borrow the smaller amount for example in your long term account you have a 10 lakhs but you need immediately 5 lakh rupees and then you are going to borrow from the bank bank knows that you have this 10 lakh but over the period of time this may be having the value of 15 lakh which means that bank even does not care about how much information you are going to reveal to the bank bank will immediately sanction you the money because they know that they can recover from your long term account easily so here the collateral understanding is important and that's what we are mentioning so if suppose uh, the collateral can be any valuable asset land you have the house the house can also act as an collateral so suppose we take the example of house so house is a collateral for a mortgage loan and car is a collateral for a collateral uh, car is a car is collateral for a car loan so here we are mentioning that suppose h is the quantity of housing owned by the consumer so this is the uh, uh, the housing uh, the 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 consumer is having uh, the quant or maybe you can say one house so one house uh, is owned by the consumer so this house he is keeping as collateral the value of this house is p so the price of housing is p so which means that since housing is a fixed asset so uh, so here we are saying that this collateral value will be will be playing important role in the future period not in the current period because current period whatever is the value that has been sanctioned but if the value increases or decreases this valuation of increase in or decrease in the value of the the collateral asset will play very important role about deciding about current and future consumption of the representative consumer based on the borrowing and lending capacity so the collateral is going to play important role because not in the current period but in the future period because in future period the collateral is is acting and based on that the this representative consumer will be deciding that how much money he or she is eligible and how much till what extent he or she can borrow so it is possible to borrow against housing wealth with a collateral constraint how does it look like so this is the the collateral cost this is the budget constraint of the representative consumer so here we are saying that c plus c transpose upon 1 plus r so this you can call it, call it as ct ct plus 1 upon 1 plus r is equal to y minus t the disposable income in the current period disposable income in the future period but here you have the ph ph in the sense that this uh, uh, representative consumer owns a house so this is the value of the house ph upon 1 plus r so the um, so the collateral constraint is that it will have the value ph which is greater than equal to minus s which means that this can be act as, uh, this can act as a saving or you can also write it as c less than is equal to uh, y minus t plus p upon h uh, ph upon 1 plus r so this is the the consumption function uh, in the current period this representative consumer will have the y minus t the current income which means that in the current period this is the disposal income that this representative consumer receives plus the present value of the the collateral um, uh, collateral asset so in our case it is house h so this is the present value so in the current period this representative household is having the income disposable income plus the present value of the collateral asset so this is the current period scenario so here you have to note that the representative consumer is at equilibrium at point b it means that if he is here then he is utilizing the full of collateral wealth but what happens if the if the value of the collateral comes down so if the value of the collateral is coming down then he is having the there is inside movement of the budget line so instead of a b d now the the consumer uh, income comes down because the collateral wealth whatever we have assumed the housing so housing uh, the value of the house has come down 
So, as a result we see decrease in income, but here we have to think from the current consumption and future consumption perspective. So, so here we are seeing that with the reduced income that this representative consumer is going to have, which means that this will also reduce the, the cocolateralized wealth from which this representative consumer can seek loan. So, now this representative consumer is having the current consumption decline future consumption remains same. So, this is what we want to emphasize that with the decrease in the value of, of the collateral, the consumption, the, the representative consumer uh, compromises is in the current period, whereas the future period consumption remains same. So, he is moving from B to G. So, we can see that this arrow line indicates that because of this decrease in the value of the collateral, the representative consumer is compromising in the current period whereas in the future period the consumption remains same. So, consumption comes down in the current period. You can also think about inverse. So, this is same like what we have discussed in case of two period model what happens if the representative consumer sees a future income decrease. So, it is the same way. The slope of these two budget lines are the same. So, there is no change in the budget line. So, the rate of interest we are not because budget line slope is the rate of interest, but we are not bothering about that, we are directly thinking about reducing the, uh, the size of uh, the or the wealth of the representative consumer given this collateral wealth. So, when you have the decline in the wealth of the collateral, you compromise on the current consumption, your future consumption remains same. Now, let us face an uh, example here. So, suppose we have the uh, consumer A which has the limited commitment problem PH wealth that can be sold only in the future period and not in the current period and it can also act as a collateral constraint alone. The individual faces lump sum tax T and T plus 1 in the current and future periods. We superimpose the limited commitment problem with taxation. Now, here we are dealing with the scenario. What we are saying is that if you have the representative consumer who is having the collateral constraint PH, this pH will be used in the future. So, in future period, not in the current period. If you have the future period and this representative consumer is also facing a tax that he is paying tax T and T plus 1 in the current and future period. So, tax is certain. Now, if we are going to impose the limited commitment problem here, what will be the limited commitment problem? Limited com commitment problem will be that if this representative consumer is not going to pay the tax, then the government will be taking out the collateral asset as an uh, compensation for not paying the tax. So, the, this is what we are saying. If we are imposing this condition, then how we can uh, calculate the uh, consumer's age collateral constraint in the limited commitment environment with respect to taxes? And can this limited constraint, because it is going to play a role in the future period, so can this uh, uh, collateral is going to play or impact the government expenditure? because government can only react to the taxes if he or she is not paying, but cannot control on the income of the individual. So, this is how it looks like. So, what will be the consumer's age collateral constraint in the limited commitment environment with respect to taxes? So, this will be that minus S into 1 plus R is less than PH minus TT plus 1. So, this is the future. So, until unless this representative consumer is going to uh, give less than this uh, or have the ha value less than this, then only uh, this uh, amount will play a role. So, and if you drive the consumption, so what it looks like that this representative consumer will have Y minus T, which is the current disposable income plus the collateral value upon 1 plus R that he will be getting. So, and minus T T plus 1 upon 1 plus R, which means so, overall what it looks like that the representative consumer is as long as pH value is higher, the representative consumer is not going to face any trouble, but if the pH value is lower, then the representative consumer may uh, get the, uh, may feel the impact. So, in this scenario, if you think from the Ricardian equivalence perspective, it does not look like that Rijagan equal equivalence will have any trouble here because it will hold. But in this environment that we are assuming with respect to the current taxes, even if the individual is not, uh, even if the individual is having a tax burden, but if it is compensated with the rise in the collateral asset, then this will play a very important role.
does limited commuter problem put a check on the government? Yes, it will pay, it will put a check to the government because as long as the value of pH is higher than the TT plus 1 then the there is no issue the moment you have the pH value lower than TT plus 1 then the government will always have the limited money. So, as long as this is higher government does not uh, care about if the if the individual will not pay the taxes government will simply seize that pH and sell it in the market and get the higher value. So, as long as the pH value is greater than TT plus 1 the size of the government will not matter. But if pH is less than TT plus 1 then the government size will matter because this government will not be able to extract the same amount of tax that the individual is supposed to pay. Now, here we have a, a further one more topic to be discussed. So, what we learned from here that in case of limited commitment what typically happens is that the individual uh, uh, the 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 individual is going to face a situation where the representative consumers consumption will be dependent upon the value of the collateral. If the value of the collateral increases, the consumption will increase otherwise it will impact the behavior and here we can see easily that it is impacting. Now, we are going to understand a new uh, tools and concepts uh, in the field of social security. Now, in macroeconomics uh, those of you who are getting used to uh, or getting introduced to this topic for the first time, we often talk about what we call it as pay as you go scheme. So, there are two types of schemes in social security. One is called the pay as you go which means that when you are young you pay the tax, when you are old you get the benefit. Then, you, then second scheme is called mandatory requirement. What happens in the mandatory requirement? In mandatory requirement the individuals are supposed to pay, uh, supposed to save mandatorily as per the instructions of the government a certain amount of money for, uh, for the contribution towards the social security and once they retire then this amount of money will be used for their welfare. Now, Social security as such is not a very uh, uh, I would say interesting topic in the area of, of finance uh, in, the, in the area of macroeconomics because here you have uh, two things to understand that when I talk about social security it speaks about the commitment of the government. So, government can say that we are no more bothered about the social security. So, individuals will start saving from their disposable income and this disposable income will be creating a, some kind of cushion for the households after the uh, in the post retirement period. But in real life we always see that the government is also having some kind of commitment and individuals are also aware that government will provide some kind of social safety net. Uh, uh, after the the working age and once they retire then the government will be taking care because for the high income class or the middle income class it may not matter much but for the poor class social security does matter and we found that in case of the us economy when we had the uh, first wave of pandemic and the stringency announced we found that lot of people were asking for the social safety net and seeking uh, fresh social safety net at that time. So, taxes on working population pay for the social security transfer for the retired each period. Suppose we talk about two generations. So, one is alive. So, when we talk about two generations, so here we talk about in the same way that we discuss about the finite lives. We had overlapping a kind of scenario. So, we say that here we have young and old the young pay social security taxes T, the old receive social security benefits B. So, when I say that young is paying the social security tax, when you are young you are paying, the old receives the social security benefits B, which means that if I am saying that N represent the old, N transpose represent the young. So, N transpose the young is equivalent to 1 plus N which means the growth of the old you can say. So, old uh, so whatever we say the young young population is equal to 1 plus a small n which shows the, the, the you can say the additions uh, to the old 
So, which also means that if I go for uh, uh, solving for n, so n is nothing but uh, n transpose upon 1 plus n, so this can be easily understood. Now, if I am going for social security benefit, so if I substitute here n transpose instead of here, so it becomes 1 plus n n. So, if I write here, suppose we want to get the social benefit, so here the old is n, the benefit that old is getting is b which is equivalent to the young number of young. So, the old benefit which is multiplied by the number of old people, it is equivalent to the young, which means that the rate of growth of young population will matter a lot. If I am saying why it is, it is mattering a lot, because as long as it is higher, it does not matter for the, so if the population growth rate is higher, if the, if the n is, is, is getting higher, then of course, this will compensate and the share will be distributed. So, distribution will play important role here. So, if I substitute n transpose of this here, then what we get is nothing but your total, uh, I would say tax will be equivalent to the benefit that old is getting and it is divided by 1 upon 1 plus n. So, which means that the, the ratio of benefit, so benefit uh, that the old is getting, it is distributed across the population growth, so 1 plus n. So, if this is higher, the burden of benefit is going to be lower, which means that overall tax is going to be lower. If this is going to be lower, then the burden is going to be higher, which means the tax is going to be higher. And this T is born on the younger population, the older one is going to get B. So, as long as 1 plus n is higher, then it is always better to, to have the scenarios for the younger people. But it can be also argued that instead of focusing on the population growth, why um, the government is not simply whatever amount of money it is collecting, why can't it invest? So, when you are investing in the market, you will get the higher rate of interest. That return will be further addition to the net uh, capital, whatever amount of capital has been invested. And uh, the, the rate of return generated from the interest can also be used for the benefit of the, the younger population. Uh, so, which in turn will reduce the burden of the younger population. So, tax will be lower. So, here it matters a lot that as long as the population growth is higher, the burden of the, the benefit going to older population will also be lower on the younger generation and tax will all and this will simply reflect the lower tax on the young, young population. So, here we have pay as you go social security for consumers who are old in period T. So, in period T since this particular individual is not going to, going to be bothered so much about. So, if this individual is not going to be bothered so much about then we can say that if this particular individual is not going to be bothered so much about then he is at H, right. The moment he uh, gets the social security benefit from the pay as you go, then this is going to be on a higher indifference curve. He can enjoy the, the consumption here. So, earlier he was having the consumption of this much, but now the endowment has gone up with the benefit in the future, because in the current period this particular individual is not bothering so much. His future consumption rises and this future consumption uh, rise will also uh, uh, accompanied by the upward movement of the or parallel shift of, of the budget line and, and here it is clear case that how we are seeing the parallel movement and the individual is moving from lower to higher indifference curve and the, uh, the old is having good time. But what happens when you are talking about the younger generation? So, what happens to the younger generation? So, younger generation, so here it makes sense to understand. So, what, what he, we are saying that this y transpose plus b, which is the amount that has been taken out from the or that will be shared on the younger population, it is going to play very important role here y transpose b. This b, we are analyzing the value of this here in the next. 
So pay as you go social security for consumers born in period T and later. So here we are saying that this is the amount that this particular guy will have. This is the the uh, the. So this is for the younger generation. So for younger generation also, here is having the H. But as long as y minus b upon n, so 1 plus n, as long as 1 plus n is, so here we have not put the scenario that what happens when n is greater than r. So if n is greater than r, which means the rate of population growth is higher, then it does not matter to the individual. So once I am talking about the individual that how this representative consumer is going to decide about the consumption when he is young. It depends upon when n is greater than r, which means that if the rate of population is going to be higher, it will also experience the similar change that earlier he was at h, then he is moving to j. So h and j that here you have, uh, you have the uh, higher movement of the indifference curve and this also shows that this individual is going to uh, get benefit as long as n is greater than higher. The moment n is not greater than higher, then there you have the more burden shared by the individual and there will be extra pressure on the private credit market. So these things are important to note. So as I mentioned, pay as you go is beneficial only if the population growth rate exceeds the real interest rate. The interpretation is that the population growth rate is the employed rate of return for an individual. So this is how we try to uh, mention. Fully, fully funded scheme is important to understand. In fully funded scheme, the, it is government mandated, so you do not, do not uh, go for uh, so much. So here it is like a forced saving. So individuals are uh, forced to save more. Once individuals are so save, forced to save more, so suppose individual is at F. Now his endowment is here, he is happy at point D, but he is forced to save at F and at this F he is compromising on current consumption may be the future consumption may be comfortable, but he would like to enjoy at this point D because this uh, amount that he is having E, he can save this amount of transfer in future. So what is the idea behind as the economists have argued that as compared to point D in case of social security schemes it creates inefficiency and this inefficiency is playing important role uh, because of the force saving that the government is imposing on the individuals. And uh, this has lot of limitations as highlighted uh, by the Williamson that if you are uh, thinking about the mandatory schemes, a mandatory scheme forces the individual uh, and it also attracts risky investment that may also lead to moral hazard, it also attracts inefficiencies. So those inefficiencies are discuss discussed here that fully funded programs encounter the problem of investment inefficiency because of the political in interference because it is a huge amount you can invest and some risky investment may create trouble. Moral hazard problem, lack of monitoring, it may also happen that individuals who are going for force saving they may not be taking care well and this results in the, in the because they are contributing so they know that the government is going to take care so they will not be, be bothered so much about. But pay as you go depends on the population growth, but fully funded schemes are those in which everyone is participating. So this is what we have understood so far. So in both the cases, as long as the rate of population in growth is higher, we do not care about the taxes, taxes will be lower and individuals will be able to smooth out. So Ricardo equivalence may not be applicable there, but the moment you have the rate of population growth going to be lower, private uh, credit market will be playing important roles, there will be some extra burden on the individuals which may not be helping in them in smoothing out the consumption, then pay as you go social security may have some troubles. So during business cycle when you have income, low income, the population growth is also low, income is also low, at that time required an equivalence may not hold. Otherwise in most of the cases, the smoothing is playing important role and smoothing can help in designing the certain social security benefits. So let me summarize what we have covered so far. So we have covered the credit market imperfections with the housing as in collateral and we saw that how the impact is being seen. We also understood from the example that if government is going to impose certain uh, regulations that if individuals are not paying the taxes then their wealth will be confiscated. If, if government is going to uh, uh, go for some kind of that kind of uh, rule then the value of the collateral will also play important role. because. 
the the amount of the money recovery will depend upon how much is the wealth of the collateral then we introduced the social security and under that we studied that how young generation plays very important role in most of the cases fully funded programs are important but at the same time they also have certain limitations as we find in case of pay as you go. so i am stopping it here in the next session we'll be talking about a new topic thank you thank you so much